And welcome back to Coast to Coast. So, Dolores, they had a plan, huh? Okay. Um, yeah, one thing I would like to say, one of the reasons the other investigators and other hypnotists are not getting the information I do is because they work in the lighter levels. In my technique, I work in the deepest possible level of trance, which is called the somnambulistic level. At that level, the conscious mind cannot interfere. It is totally out of the picture. The person doesn't remember anything when they awaken. Okay. So you can see we can get a lot better information than at the lighter levels of trance. And how many people in the trance state will tell you this? Uh, Everyone. What, what percent? Really? All of them? Oh, boy. No, that's the, that's the beauty of this technique that I've developed is that 90% of the people go into the deep trance. And my main concern is uh, helping them with their problems as a therapist and the counseling and also the physical problems. But during the session, this kind of information comes out. Because what I'm finding now, this is what I'm going to go into, instead of going into a past life, which we used to do, right. whatever, that's the, how I began. I always take the person to, their, to an appropriate past life to explain their problems. Guess what it used to be? You'd go to a past life. Not anymore. Now they either go back to God when they were created or they go to when they were on spacecrafts, other planets. It's a whole new thing developing. The okay. only ones who go to past lives anymore that I work with are those who still have karma to be repaid. So I see a whole new um, trend happening here that the other ones don't see because they don't work like I do. Okay, now right before the break, you yeah. were telling us about how they had a plan to try to fix this. Yeah, they had to come up with something to save us from ourselves. We're, we're the bad guys in the whole picture. <laughs> we got to save. We don't even realize what we're doing. They got to save us from ourselves. Okay. Now, like I said a few minutes ago, Earth has been stuck in this a reincarnation wheel for eons. You know, for eons. You know, people. You don't just have one life. You have hundreds and hundreds of lives. And if you've been on Earth for hundreds and hundreds of lifetimes. You're stuck in the reincarnation wheel, going round and around, making the same mistakes again and again, and not knowing how to get off of it. You just come back with the same people, same circumstances, and that's the whole problem. So they knew the people here who were stuck in this cycle were not going to be able to solve the problem because of, you know, that's where the violence comes from, that's where the wars, mm -hmm. keep making the same mistakes again and again. So their plan, which I think was brilliant, was let's bring in other souls, pure souls who have never known Earth life, who have never been on Earth before, who have not known the violence and are not stuck in karma. Let's get pure souls coming in. Maybe they can do something to turn the whole cycle around. Are you following me? And, and when did they start doing this? Right it, after? Right after that. With the thought okay. in the 1950s, early 1950s is when it all began. And what they did, they put out a call to the universe. Does anyone want to volunteer and come and help Earth? And they said they had meetings, and I've had many, many of my clients have gone back instead of going to past lives, go to when they were having these meetings, and they were discussing it. Who wants to go and help? And they said, I've had to say, I foolishly raised my hand and said I would go. Not <laughs> now, a lot of takers, though, I bet, huh? Oh, definitely. But that's the problem. When you come into Earth life, you don't remember what you volunteered for. Everything is wiped out when you're born. But that's true of everybody. None of yeah. us know our past lives. We don't know why we came. We don't know our association with other people. So it makes it harder. But I asked them one time, wouldn't it be easier if we remembered why we came? We remembered what we were here for and our association with other people. They said it wouldn't be a test if you knew the answers. So you have to come in just totally blacked out and start all over again and learn it as you go along. 
So I had people, instead of going to past lives, like some of them would go back to where they had never left God. They had never Mm -hmm. left the source. We all began there and went out and wanted to explore and wanted to learn. Some of them didn't. It was It's so beautiful there. And I can tell you what God is like. I can tell you all of that if you're interested. Well, we'll get to that. You want to get to that later then? Or what? Yeah. Now, what? I, I'm, I'm curious with okay. these. But some the, of them go back to Hold that. on. Can you, can you hear me? I'm yeah. curious with the waves of people okay, that's who what I'm came here. To now. Are, they, are they humans or ETs? They're humans, but their souls are either ETs or they have never had a body before. They've come direct from God. All right. But the ones who were ETs were those who were on spaceships, on planets, other dimensions, and they sent out the call. Because I've had people, while they're under, talking about when they came and what they left, they were so happy with. They were happy on the other planets. They were happy when they were with God, and I said, then why did you come to earth? They said, I heard the call. And this has happened time after time after time with my clients. They say, I heard the call. I knew I had to come. Earth was in trouble. I volunteered. Now, why would this be repeated through hundreds of people if there wasn't something to it? Now, what are the things they would try to do to help us? To live among us, to change us by living among us. Would they get involved politically? I mean, would we know? I mean, would there be one of them living next door to you, for example? Oh, very likely, because they look just like you. They have no conscious memory of where they came from. So they're not here to corrupt anything. They're not here to cause any problems. We don't want to go on a witch hunt looking for these people because now there are tens of thousands of them all over the world. They said, finally, we have tipped the scale. We think we can save the earth by the sheer number of these souls that have no karma. They have, they have no reason to, um, well, what I want to say, they really didn't have to be here at all. They just came. But that's where the three waves come in. And when I first wrote about this in Keepers of the Garden, that was 20 years ago. Now I get letters because the books are translated all over the world, and they all said, I didn't know that was what it was. I didn't know why I felt the way I do, and now I understand, and I can live with it. You said the first wave that many of them tried to commit suicide. How come? Yes, because they, they, they didn't like it here. They couldn't adjust. Okay, let me explain now. If we, I don't know when you're going to go into another break here. Oh, wait, wait, um, you got time. You got time. What? You've got time. Okay, the three waves that I found. The first wave that they must be now in their early fifties, their forties or their early fifties, because the first one I discovered had just turned thirty years old, and that was twenty years ago, and I'm still in touch with him. Now this wave. When they came in, these are people, they don't want to be here. They don't like it here. They can't stand the violence. They want to go home, but they don't know where home is. They just know it's not here. They're very gentle people. These are not conspirators. They're not people who want to hurt anyone. They're just here to change by existing, by being here. So they are living among us just as ordinary people, but it's very, very difficult for them because they feel out of place. You can understand why. Mm -hmm. Because the ones I've talked to, this is all over the world. They said they have a good family. They had a good job, but they just didn't want to be here. They wanted to go home. And many of them did try to commit suicide, especially in their earlier years, because they just couldn't take it here. Interesting. But after I worked with them and they find out why they're here, then they change. And they said, all right, I may not like it here, but I'm going to do my job. This is the first wave of people. And uh, I've run into them now all over the world when I lecture on this. Even in South Africa a few weeks ago, two women came up to me afterwards and they said, now I understand why I've felt like this all my life. Now I know what I have to do. These first wave folks would be what, 40, 50 years old today? Yeah, they would be in their late 40s and early 50s. 
See, okay. that would put it right at the, after the atomic bomb. Right. The first wave began to come in. They had a very difficult time. They had a the, terrible time adjusting. The baby boomers. Oh, that's the third wave. Let's get into the other second wave first. <laughs> no, no, no. People in their 40s and 50s are oh, called 40s the baby Oh, 40s and 50s. Okay. Yeah. I guess that would be, wouldn't it? Yeah. About yeah, that were, age? They were the baby boomers. Of those Another uh, characteristic of these first uh, wave, they don't like... Uh, they don't like violence, but they can't understand emotion. Anger and fear upset them and paralyze them to where they can't uh, they can't handle it. So many of them kind of remain as loners mm-hmm. okay. because the the whole emotional thing of Earth is just so chaotic. See, Earth is a very challenging planet, and they said you're very brave to come to Earth and want to experience what's here. We're here to learn emotions and limitations. And some people, that's very difficult. But this new wave, can you imagine not having any experience in Earth and coming right into it? It'd be very difficult for them. Sure. And many of the ones I've talked to were suicidal, and some of them were on uh, you know, antidepressants. But once we found out where it was coming from, they've gone off the antidepressants. Okay, the second wave uh, are different. They are in their 20s and their 30s now. They're just below the age group of the first wave. Okay. I call them the antennas, the channelers, the generators. This is what they're called. They're different. They are not having, they didn't have near the problem that the first wave did. They are here not to do anything. They're just here to be. Their energy that they generate in their body affects everyone they come in contact with. So you, can you see how this is going to help change the world? Are these, are these people like healers? Well, they can be if they want to be, but most of them, they just uh, live by themselves or they, have a, they work from home. They're very gentle people, but they say they could walk through a mall of people or a grocery store and affect everyone that they came in contact with. They're, They're po- positive people. Very positive energy. Okay. And both of these groups don't want to have children. Now, when they come in, they said there's like a shield, I guess you would say, put over them so they cannot uh, accumulate karma. It's to keep them from accumulating karma. And the ma- majority of them don't want children because children uh, causes karma. When you have children, they want to do their job and get out of here. They don't want to be stuck on earth. They want to go back to where they came from. They're just a volunteer. But many of them are here for how many years at each time? A lifetime. Lifetime. Okay. Yeah. Because the first one I met is now in his early 50s. And he's always had a problem adjusting. He's a very gentle person, but he is he's hanging in there anyway. <laughs> but... um. And they, this, is, they, this is the second wave you're talking about. Yeah, the second yeah. wave, uh, you wouldn't even know them. They just blend in very easily. They have, don't have the problems. And I asked them, why did the first one have so many problems where the second wave didn't? They said somebody had to be the beginning. Someone had to be the pioneers. They were the way showers. They had to, to blaze the trail. That's why they have so much difficulty. Then the second group were easier for them to follow. Now, a lot of these people, these waves, it was difficult for their energy to enter into a fetus because their energy is so different than a normal human being. So this is where the ETs had to come into play again because often the energy had to be manipulated and changed, and especially the energy of the mother so that the mother could handle the energy of this incoming different type of uh, uh, soul, I guess you would say, because we're all souls and spirits. Mm -hmm. And sometimes in the beginning, the energy would be too strong and the baby would die, the fetus would die before it was born because it couldn't handle it. The mother's energy, it it was too different. So then it had to be adjusted again Sometimes only a part of the energy of the soul could come in 
so that the mother could handle it. And this is where you hear stories of the, somebody will say, well, my mother had a child before me, but it was born dead or it was aborted and because they couldn't handle the energy. Then the second time, they were able to come through. And then as they grow older, the rest of the energy of the soul is brought in. And I know this is a little complicated for some people to understand. This is the kind of stuff I'm getting now in my convoluted universe books. But, um, well, and, and as you say, they're coming from people in trance states, right? Yes, and when these they... are normal, everyday people. You would never know them if you saw them on the street. The third wave are the new children, and we're all familiar with them now. That And they are the ones, they are called the gift to the world. Are these the indigo kids? Well, that, that word is not really uh, applicable anymore because uh, we call them the new kids on the block, the star children. They're different. Their energy is different. They come in knowing so much more. And they said the DNA has already been changed. Now, our DNA is being worked on constantly. This is part of the um, abduction stuff. Everything that is happening has to do with the DNA is being changed. Because you remember the original idea was to have a species that would have no disease and would never die. Well, the pharmaceutical companies will love that, won't they? Oh, yeah. (laughs) (laughs) But they're very concerned about the effects of the additives in our food and the um, the uh, pollutants in the air and what we're doing to our bodies. That explains a lot of the abductions with the examinations. They're trying to find cures for cancer and for all the other diseases. And when this happens, they will give these subconsciously to different scientists so they can develop cures on their own. But also, the DNA is being manipulated so that we don't get sick, and we will live longer. And the children are coming in with it already in place. And you know, George, I just read an article, I'm going to do some more research on it, that the scientists are doing examinations of our DNA. They are finding something definitely has happened. That well, that's interesting. We are turning into a totally new species of human that our DNA is different than it was even 20, 30 years ago. And they they, can't figure out what's going on, can they? No, they said we are turning into a species that cannot get sick. So I said, aha, they're finally beginning to find proof of it. (laughs) I asked them one time, won't the scientists know something? The doctors notice something is different. They said, no, because they won't know what to look for. But it's there, and they said a lot of these people that I've worked with won't get sick because they're not supposed to go to the doctor. So there's a lot of things happening, but I don't want people out there to get scared. This is not, um, it's not demonic. It's not negative. It shows how they are helping the world. You think it's a complicated huge project, but you think it's a wonderful project, don't you? I do, because it's to save the world. Otherwise, they said, oh, we're going to destroy ourselves. And we can, they can't allow that to happen. At what point, though, Dolores, do they overtake in terms of numbers? Those greedy people, those warmongering people who have put us in the position we're in today. When do they, when do they really start to help? Start to help or start to hurt? No. The when, do, when, when do the good ones start to help? Oh, they're already helping. They're helping mean, in more ways than you know. You mean without them it would be even worse than it is now? Oh, definitely. That's what they said. Now they think by sheer numbers we they have turned the corner, and there's a possibility now the world will be saved. Dolores, when we come back, let's talk a little bit more about this. Plus, I want to get your take again on Nostradamus and uh, some other work right here on Coast to Coast AM. Okay, next hour, we'll take your phone calls with Dolores Cannon, but when we come back, we'll talk more about uh, really this incredible story. Plus, she's got other information about Nostradamus and hidden underground cities. It's uh, fascinating. That's next on Coast to Coast AM. Dolores, based on what you're hearing from these people in this um, uh, regression, 
Is it safe to assume we're going to be okay? Oh, are you talking to me? Oh, there's nobody else out there. Oh, okay. <laughs> I'm sorry, I had it on the speakerphone listening to it while you were doing the commercials. I didn't know when it was you or when it was when it's live and when it's uh, the other. Okay. All right. Now, there were some things I wanted to clarify on that last part. Is that okay? All right, and then we'll get into this. Okay, the third wave, the new children. This is one thing that the people have to understand. These are kids who are different than the ones that have come before. They're coming in with a tremendous amount of knowledge, and they learn things extremely fast. This is why the teachers are going to have to learn to understand this. I've spoken at the conferences about educating the educators because they don't understand these new children. See, the reason they get bored so quickly is because they already know this information, and they learn extremely fast. The kids have told me, They'll, the teacher will ask them for an answer to a question, mostly math or something. They give them the answer. The teacher says, well, how did you find that answer? And they said, I know it. And that's not good enough. The teacher wants them to go step by step. They, are, they have this uh, remarkable ability. And then they said, that the kids say the teacher goes over and over and over something. She said, I got it the first time. So this is why they become bored and disruptive, and they should never, never be put on drugs because this is hampering their abilities. Uh, Ritalin is very bad for them. So they gave me solutions that I've been trying to give to the teachers. If you recognize these kind of children, uh, they're not being disruptive because they're bad. They're being disruptive because they're bored. So I said, if you could single them out and give them a project just for themselves, something to focus on, something to do, <clears throat> is that even if you give them something to tear apart and put back together again, you're channeling their energy in a creative way, and you won't have as much trouble with them. And I think those are very good ideas, and I've been trying to share this with teachers and parents everywhere. You've got to understand this is a new breed of kids. As difficult as it is to comprehend, it does make sense that these people, you call them the volunteers, would be going through all these various stages over the past 40 or 50, 60 years. Yeah. But these new kids, I saw a video not very long ago about these children, some of them are only 9 and 10 years old, have already graduated from college. And some of them are already forming their own corporations. And it's amazing that the corporations they're forming and the organizations they're putting together are dealing with helping the children of the world. Can you see what's happening here? Yeah, there's a pattern, isn't there? There's a pattern, definitely. The older ones are the ones that have the most trouble, but the newer ones are coming in with everything in place if we don't disrupt it and harm it. That's the problem. Is there going to be a fourth wave? No, because something else is going to happen. <laughs> uh -huh. I think we should get into that before we go into further. I don't know if you've heard people talk about the new earth. Uh, explain that. Okay. Because you mentioned earlier, what about the greedy people and those? Are they going to take over the world, et cetera, et cetera? If that's the world you want to live in, all right. But there is what is going to happen. We have already begun to do this. We are shifting into a new earth. This began about 2003, and we're in the middle of it right now. And it's the vibrations and the frequencies of the entire planet are going to push it into a different dimension. First time it's ever happened in the history of the universes. Very momentous occasion that it will move into a new dimension. And we can get into 2012. It's all tied in with all of that. It is 2012 is not the end of the world. I don't know where they ever came up with this violence. I've seen the commercials on TV about the movie. That's not what 2012 is all about. Oh, the movie will scare the heck out of you, Dolores. Oh, definitely. 
But that's not what it's about at all. 2012, they said, it's not the final, it's the culmination when the vibrations and the frequencies are meeting their, meeting their peak. And whenever we cross over, if we want to cross over. Now, this is, uh, I'm trying to explain this as easy as I can. This is what I'm lecturing on everywhere now. The information I gave about the three waves, this is the first time I gave that on the radio. But I've been lecturing on it all over the world and about the new earth, which I think is very important. They were going to separate into two earths, the old earth and the new earth. The new earth is where all the violence will be. You have the uh, volcanic eruptions, the earthquakes, all of the natural earth disasters are going to be on the old earth. Mm -hmm. Wars, all of that will be left with that. The negativity, as you said, the greed, the power hungry. Because they said down through history, many, many civilizations have risen to the point where they could do anything. Their, their minds were so uh, advanced, they could do anything. Then man would come to the point that he would have greed come in and power, and the civilization would end up being destroyed. Atlantis was one example. It's the one that's most popular. But there were also many before that that um, were also reached the peak and was destroyed because they said once you start going against the laws of nature, you, have, you, can't, you can't have that. And that's when the civilization would have to be destroyed. But the problem is every time one is destroyed, then they said you have to start all over again. There would be survivors left each time to start the whole world again. But it would take so much time to generate a whole new civilization and get it to the peak. They want us to advance. They want us to get to where eventually we will be with them in the, what they call the Federation. Because they want us because of our curiosity and our creativity. But as long as we have the violence, it can't be allowed. We destroy everything we touch. So down through time, all these civilizations, they would reach a peak. Psychic development and psychic abilities would be extremely powerful. Man would misuse it, and they would have to be destroyed. This time, they said, we're heading that direction again. That's why they said, you must know this knowledge. One of the things we are doing that are going against the laws of nature, like the other ones did, is this genetic thing that we're doing. You, I heard on the commercials you're talking about the crop. This is yeah. not allowed, and we're genetically manipulating animals, which is not allowed. These are going against the laws of nature. It's going to backfire on us. One it day. did before. This is what brought Atlantis down. Atlantis, they got, I think they got bored because Atlantis had existed for thousands of years. It was not just a short civilization. But they were also manipulating genes, and they had half man and half animal. This is where all of your legends came from was not the Greeks and the Romans. They were carrying forth memories of the, uh, what really happened in Atlantis. Your centaur, your minotaur, all the half-man, half-animals were genetically created in Atlantis, and they were used as uh, servants. They were sterile. Well, they said this was one of the main reasons they had to go down because they were interfering with the laws of nature. And they said, you must know this because your scientists are doing the same thing. And you probably know for several years now they have been genetically uh, introducing human cells into pigs. Yes. And that's so that yeah. they were able to transplant their organs into the human body. Yeah. The human body will reject any foreign object, but if the organ had human cells in it, the body would accept it. That's the theory. But there was one scientist who, came, who told them, he warned them, he said, yes, it's safe to handle pork, it's safe to eat pork, but what's going to happen if you put a, a pig organ into the body that is being constantly supplied by blood and the cells are moving throughout the body, it could uh, create a disease that we would have no uh, no cure for. Well, that's true. Well, now they put pig valves in us. Is that could that be a problem? 
I think it could be because they're using something like that. And that's what they said. Um, that That's why it had to – let me see, back up here. I lost my train of thought there. <laughs> the It's getting late for it, you. It, it, <laughs> okay. So my, my mind is always jumping all over the place on what it's going to say next. Uh-huh. But they they said the by being in the body and generated like that, anyway, for a while they stopped the experimentation because they were worried about it. But now they said they've started it up again. They've ignored the other scientists' warning, and they're moving ahead with it. That's probably what you're finding out now about the pig valves. Yeah. So they said this is not a good idea. You're going down a road that's going to lead to destruction. That and the misuse of power, the nuclear power, all of this. It's, uh, they can't allow this to happen. Well, looking into your crystal ball, Dolores, what do you see the next five, ten years for us to be like? We're, we're going to move into the new Earth. That's it's, a good thing. Oh, it's a definitely a good thing. Now, in the Bible, this is called, in the book of Revelation, the new heaven and the new Earth. It's all there in the Bible, if you want to go back to that, the book of Revelation, where there's a separation Now, they said uh, those who are interested in this, those who understand what's happening, the ones into metaphysics, the ones who are thinking along this line, will definitely go to the new earth. Everyone will not go. The ones who are still into negativity, who are stuck on the wheel of karma, who are very, you know, they're doing all these awful things, like you're talking about the greedy and those, they will stay with the old earth. They will stay with what they created. But the new earth is happening now. It's the vibrations and frequencies are changing. And it's going to move into a totally new dimension. Now, when that happens, it's a separation of the two. This is what's very hard to understand. I've asked them many times. I have more and more questions. It's in several of my books. As I learn more, I keep adding more information. And I keep asking more questions. And they said, we don't, can't tell you what's going to happen for sure because we don't have all the answers because this has never happened in the history of a universe before that an entire planet will shift into another dimension. They said it's the greatest show on Earth. The ETs, everybody in space is watching this to see can we pull it off. It's a big thing that's going to happen. And the new earth is going to be glorious. It's going to be wonderful. And that's where the majority of us are headed as long as we understand what's going on. Part of my job is to let people know. Is there anything, well, how do, how do we know that we're not uh, one of the volunteers, for example? You wouldn't know. We don't know that, do we? No, you don't know that. I only found this out with my work. What percent might be volunteers? Well, they said now there's tens of thousands everywhere. So most of us aren't, probably. Well, look what you're interested in. (laughs) I know, that's true. I'm not sure your age, if you fall into that category or not. I'm 93 years old. Oh, yeah, you don't look a day over. (laughs) 59. 59, okay. You could possibly be in the upper part, one of the first ones. But you see your interest in this, the metaphysical and the strange. You want to find out the truth. That puts you in the category that you will go to the new earth. You're trying to understand things. When did you start seeing these I, I, I'll call them patients. They're, they're really not. But clients. When, clients. Clients. When did you start seeing the clients starting to talk about this? Well, the first one I said was 20 years ago when I wrote the book Keepers of the Guard. It was the first one I'd ever heard of. And then years went by. I guess you would think maybe in the last 10 years or more, it's becoming more and more prevalent. And you're beginning to see more and more clients who yes. fit into this category. Yes, and this is what comes out. It's no longer being hidden in my sessions. They don't go into past lives. They go into these other things. And I began thinking, what's going on here? 
because in my class, I teach them to take them into past lives, but now we have exceptions to the rule. There are people that have not had any karma. They, they're not supposed to be here. But I think, I don't know the percentages, but it's happening quite often in my work, and I see hundreds and hundreds of people in a year. There is a... There, keeps I'm, coming up, you know. There, there is a very spiritual tie-in to this. Definitely. That's what I, I find that fascinating. You know, uh-huh. like the tie-in to the Book of Revelation and in areas like that. Is, is there going to be like an antichrist in, in all of this somehow? Now you're going into Nostradamus. <laughs> yes. Well, I'll tell you, you know, when I got the Nostradamus material, this was in 1986 when I was working on all of that, and that would be over 20 years ago. And I wrote the three volumes, and I lectured on that for many, many years, warning people about what was to come. But that was what Nostradamus told me to do. He said, you must go all over the world and tell people what will happen if they don't do something. He Conversations said, with Nostradamus, if I remember, right? Oh, yes. It was three years and 12 different people, and we did all of the quatrains. And many, many of them have come true. But I kept began to wonder. I stopped lecturing on it, oh, maybe 10 years ago, because I have got into this other material now that is deeper. So, but I, according to the predictions, we should have been into a horrible world war with the Middle East, by the before the beginning of the year 2000. Well, now, we came we came close. We did. We came very close and dates are the hardest thing for any psychic to see. True. But he said he wanted me to tell people, he said if I tell you the most horrible things you can do to yourself, will you do something to change it? Now he said the future is not carved in stone and he told me this many many times that you can make a difference. You can make changes. That there are many probabilities and possibilities. That it's like he saw a nexus point, and he said at the nexus point was an event or a personality that had to happen. From that, it branched out into all these various possibilities and possibilities that could happen from that event or that person. And he said, your future depends on which one of these paths you go down. That's why he was trying to show us, if I show you the absolute worst that will happen if you go down this certain path, will you do something to change it? And that's why he wanted me to tell people, you don't know the power of your own mind. They won't force us to change, though. We've got to do this on our own. Oh, we have to. That's the whole thing the planet of free will. But you don't know the power of your own mind. Everything in your life you have created, you have put there. And you know many, many times in your own life you come to a point where you have to make a decision. Should I go this way? Should I go that way? Mm -hmm. Should I get divorced? Should I marry? Should I get this job? Should I go to college? We all come up with decisions. And you know whatever decision you make your life would have been totally different than the one you chose. 